Hello everyone. Welcome to episode number 30, the April episode of Curiosity, the science show. So uh, it's a long way, you know, the 30 episode. I really enjoy making each and every episode because it is a self-learning opportunity for me and an opportunity to share with what I learned, uh, you know, in the past one month with the community, the Young Academy of India, the community of lifelong learners, right? So welcome to this journey. Let's continue, you know. So this episode, in April episode, we will cover, as usual, the science news, uh, what really moved the sciences in the last month, right? Yes, so sharks. So sharks, there, is, there had never been a proof of sleep, but now we have multiple sharks have been found to be sleeping. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it is basically the evidence, you know, the first confirmed evidence of the sharks do sleep. Then Jakarta is a capital of Indonesia, right? So it's the fastest sinking city in the world. Approximately 25 centimeter every year it sinks. So now the Indonesia is moving its capital from Jakarta to a new city. The new capital is called Nusantara. It means archipelago, you know. So the main reason is the sinking plus Java Sea, you know, it's of course in the island Java, right? The, the sea level is increasing, the rising sea level because of the, uh, you know, the climate change and global warming, you know, so that is the reason. So it is really terrific, the, the, the real world consequence of the climate change, you know, the moving of the entire capital with millions of people, you know, the Jakarta, it's terrific news, right? And Antarctic ice sheet or so, it has been warming terrifically for the last month, we saw 50 percentage, uh, um, 50 degrees Celsius above normal degree in Antarctic as well as in Arctic, you know, and even in New Delhi, 10 degrees Celsius, the mean temperature of the March was more. In 29th of March, the temperature in New Delhi was approximately 42 degree. Usually the last year, it was only 32 degree. Now 10 degrees high, you know, it's terrific. It's a catastrophic friends. So, it's a shared responsibility for all of us to fight the global warming and the climate change, the bigger umbrella term, right? And changing diet could add 10 years to our lives. Longevity is one of the topic which I cover often in this show. So the tips to increase the longevity. One major tip here is changing the diet alone that can add 10 years to your life. So what is excited this paper? I had a close look at this paper. So the paper says that few things we have to increase in our diet. What are the things to be increased? Whole grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts. 25 gram per day you should have nuts, not tremendously. Legumes and fish. So the six component we should actually increase in our diet comparing with the typical Western diet, which is kind of similar here in India as well. But in Indian diet, we do have whole grains like atta or dalia, my favorite whole grain, right? Uh, at the same time, rice, you know, the normal rice, the white rice or, uh, you know, so uh, whatever be the rice, right? In South Indian or North Indian rice, which is not really whole grain. So we should try to minimize it. And uh, other guidelines of this one is the eggs. We should minimize the consumption of the eggs from 50 grams per day to 25 grams per day. Milk and dairy also, we need to reduce it from 300 grams per day in a typical Western diet to 200 grams per day. Refined grains and also red meat and processed meat completely avoided. White meat like chicken is allowed but only very less, 50 grams per day is allowed. But red meats like beef or anything, you know, the pork, red meat is com completely avoided. That is what the, the new guidelines say for the longevity sake. And sugar sweetened beverage like um, uh, soda, you know, the, the Coca Cola or Pepsi, completely avoid it. You know, so typical uh, consumption is around 500 grams per day in that is 500 ml, right? In the Western diets. So now, as per this guideline, it's zero. And added plant oils should be 25. You know, it's same thing uh, in the Western diet and what is being prescribed for the longevity diet. 25 grams or ml per day should be the limit of the plant oil whatever be the oil even the olive oil expensive and the healthiest right canola oil is also very very healthy oil 
So another alarming story from the last week is that last month is the scientists have found microplastics in the blood. You know, so what is the repercussion of this finding? Well, we don't know. We are clueless. Does microplastics leach out the dangerous uh, plastic component like phthalates and dioxins? And it can cause cancer? We are clueless. Might be. That is one scenario. Or do these microplastics lead to plagues? You know, the microplagues in our a coronary artery system that lead to heart attacks again we don't know so all we can do is to minimize uh, you know the plastics especially the food coming in the plastic container like the delivery food you know stop this delivery food you know because that is you are unknowingly you are ingesting a lot of plastics in it and even the tea in or coffee during the party very common right uh, when they serve in the paper cups, but it's not really paper, right? There is a plastic inside. So that plastic gets leached into it and that turns into the microplastic. So beware of all these things, right? Next one is that exercising outdoors, even during the moderate air pollution is harmful for the brain. So air pollution, friends, that never gets in power, promises any of the political parties here in India or world over, you know, but pollution... We have seen that this uh, topic we cover often in curiosity that approximately uh, 1.5 lakh infants die every year here in India alone due to air pollution, you know. So if you exercise outdoor during air pollution, that is really harmful. So if you look at the risk benefit analysis, the risk outweigh the benefits of the exercise. So don't do outdoor exercise when the AQI is very high, you know, air quality index, right? We need lower, better. And very interestingly, last month we saw the discovery of the lost ship Endurance. It's a ship that uh, is a is very famous ship that has taken by Ernest Shackleton, the, the British explorer, polar explorer. You know, of course, he couldn't win the war to reach the South Pole. And then he decided to circumnavigate the Antarctic with his Endurance. It's a very interesting story. Please check out. I have covered this story in the in my book voyage to Antarctica as well. So this particular thing, this discovery is a 107 years old wreck. Of course, uh, Shackleton's endurance underwent, uh, you know, catastrophic wreck, right? In the Weddell Sea near South Georgia Island in, in the Antarctic. But till date, we have no clue where exactly is it lying. So this discovery is done by South African icebreaker S.A. Agulas. I have seen this ship in my trip in Antarctic, you know, I have some pics of that ship as well. So that ship had some submersible and that submersible, of course, it is a robotic submersible, detected this ship approximately 3000 meters below the surface of the Weddell Sea. And as per the Antarctic Treaty System, we cannot simply retrieve it. We are not supposed to take anything from the Antarctic Oceans. You know, so that wreck is still there. It's something like a museum now. It's preserved and it's a fantastic. Even the name endurance is visible. It's, it's well preserved as if it was just yesterday the wreck happened. So it is a fantastic news. Another very interesting news is a space junk. The rock piece of rocket has collided with moon, creating a crater in the other side of the moon, which is not visible to us. But many people think the other side of moon is always dark, which is incorrect, you know, though it is not visible to us because of the moon's rotation and it's actually the, the, you know, revolution around the earth is same, you know, so that is the reason why we are not visible the other side. And yes, yeah, so that story is, uh, again, it's alarming because of space junk, we really need some international treaty to curtail this space junk. And we never know that what is actually going to happen with does the space junk collide with our satellites, you know, so that treaty we need to have it, you know. And ninth news from uh, the last week is that we all know about the, the dogs, right? The dogs do sniff out even the cancer. You can train the, the dogs to sniff out the cancer, you know, they're really good at it. Even there is an airport in the world, Helsinki in Finland, they employ the service dogs to sniff out COVID-19. You know, so it is in practice. But for the dogs to train to detect cancer, it takes time. Almost one year it takes. The new research says that training ants, you know, the insect ant, 
it's so much faster it just takes 30 minutes time versus one year to sniff out cancer fantastic isn't it the ethology the animal behavior the, 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 the ants can sniff out cancer in less than 30 minutes I really like it you know so training uh, maybe ants can also be employed in airports like Helsinki to sniff out COVID-19 very interesting right and of course another very interesting news is that chimps the new behavior just like the shark sleep chimpanzee our closest primate relative use these ants to heal the wounds that is an evolutionary adaptation. They use these ants, they crush it, they put it in their wound. And no one knows how it works, but that is working for the chimpanzee, right? That is why that behavior is selected by the natural selection. That behavior is also pretty new. So check it out. All these stories are in the show notes of this, uh, you know, this, uh, this show, the curiosity, okay? Coming a quick overview of the discovery, the papers published in the last month. A new shorter wavelength ultraviolet that is safe for the people took less than five minutes to reduce the level of indoor airborne microbes by more than 98 percentage so that is pretty interesting you know so it is lower that is shorter lambda the wavelength it's safe for the people and you can use it to disinfect the you know for against infectious diseases and germs and even COVID-19 second story is that the researchers combed through more than a decade of health data from it's a very large sample more than one lakh French volunteers and they found that consumption of artificial sweeteners is linked with cancer you know so beware of artificial sweeteners friends so that means coke versus diet coke always prefer coke that is a normal sugar diet coke contains artificial sweeteners it might be related with the microbiome too the gut microbiome you know so especially a sulfame k aspartame and sucralose so these are the sweeteners that you have to be beware of third story is that the humans cannot endure temperatures and humidities as high as previously thought so that there is something called wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature means when the humidity is 100 percentage full of water in the air so how much temperature can we bear so now we know it is only up to 31 degrees the 41 degree which i told you in delhi or 42 degree to be exact on 29th march is not wet bulb the humidity was low so had the humidity been 100 then 31 is the upper limit for human being as a species you know so that is pretty interesting isn't it what is actually the problem here because we all generate heat while just by living you know all biological process there's something called exothermic reaction right we generate the heat right so of course all biological processes occur only between a range of temperature above which you know the proteins get denatured it gets irrevocably damaged right so if it's too humid then the sweat cannot evaporate so that means that the core body temperatures start or, or you know heating up our body overheats to death you know so that is why it's very very alarming and we haven't factored this in our climate change scenario for example ipcc reports so that is why this is very very important finding fourth people who are more vulnerable to having their jobs replaced by automation tend to be more supportive of the radical right wing groups you know according to the new research so those who are vulnerable for their job to be lost to the automation for example bank tellers you know so automation whatever or or taxi drivers right the, the automated car though it is not an uh, immediate future but it might come in later so those are really interesting uh yeah scenario right fifth story is the analysis of ten thousand public school district control for a host of confounding variables has found that higher teacher pay is associated with better student test score we have seen this similar study in the last episode of curiosity too you know so spending money more on the teacher pay rather than the infrastructure has better outcome for the student performance you know so if you think this way it's it's very simple right the rationale is that higher salaries will attract more smarter teachers and then they teach smartly you know so that their teaching skill tend to be better because you are attracting more talented teachers so that is that could be the reason why the test scores are higher 
the number of people who have died because of the COVID-19 pandemic could be roughly three times than the official figures, the whole over the world, you know, all over the world. So it is pretty interesting. So the true number of life lost to the pandemic by the last December, that is 31st December 2021, was close to 18 million, three times the official figure of 5.9 million. So 18 million till last December. So that is profound. You know, seven stories that the cancer cells show increased iron uptake. Iron uptake metabolism. Of course, metabolism is also high. Iron uptake is also high. So scientists have used this to create drugs that specifically target the iron metabolism. Very interesting, isn't it? So low blood iron levels can indicate some form of cancer because the cancer cells do absorb a lot of iron in it. Right? So that is something interesting study. Ninth is that the amygdala, that is a lizard brain, you know, it's a very, very small organ inside the part of our brain, human brain, right in the center, very, very small, near hypothalamus, which is controlling the emotions, isn't it? So this amygdala grows too rapidly in the baby, 6 to 12 months, who later develop autism as toddlers. So it is, you know, it is a... Uh, yeah, you can use it as a proxy, you know, it indicates the uh, higher growth of amygdala indicates the risk of autism later in their life, you know, so and also that also indicates the role of amygdala in the autism, very interesting study, isn't it? Just one drink per day can shrink in your brain, another interesting study, so uh, many confounding reports early on, they say that just a little bit of alcohol is good for the health. But that is not the case. We have covered this topic again and again, the curiosity. Even one drink, you know, the unit, one unit of drink per day, British unit, can shrink on your brain. So stop drinking altogether. Muscle strengthening lowers risk of death from all causes, study forms. So muscle strengthening exercises or resistance toning exercises can contribute in longevity. All cause mortality rate is lo lower for people who do this, uh, you know, muscle strengthening exercise, not just cardio, but muscle, only that muscle alone is a good solution for it. So populist rhetoric is associated with gullibility. What is this populist rhetoric? Populist means that us versus them scenario. You know, us, we are the common people, them, the lights, or anything like us, we are the immigrants and them, the, you, are, you are putting all together, right? For example, we are Chinese and all the rest, you are judgmental, you know, it's something kind of a, a dicto simpliciter, right? Cognitive bias. So, us versus them behavior, that is something called populist, you know? So, if you happen to be a part of this populist mentality, uh, another example is homosexual versus non-homosexual. You know, it's like black and white thinking, us versus them. But of course, it is not the case, right? It could be various, right? It's, you know, there is a fine gradation of patterns. So then if you happen to follow populists, then you are tend to have higher gullibility. So that means you tend to jump into conclusions and you are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. So very interesting psychological study. Affection from the dog is really medicinal. That is another very interesting study. So, of course, we have therapeutic dogs that can doctors prescribe for depression, you know. So, in this uh, new study that says that even just 10 minutes with the dog may help to reduce the pain for patients in the emergency room. Very interesting, isn't it? Therapeutic potential of pet. So, I would say that it could be same for cats too, not just dogs. I'm a cat lover. Of course, I love dogs too. Another large sample study uh, says that early maladaptive schemas of social isolation, that means that you don't belong, you have, you're ostracized, you know, in your workplace, for example, everyone else is forming groups, you're excluded from the group, is associated with depression later in your life. Or defectiveness of shame, body shame, for example, you feel that you don't look good, you know, you, you know, like that, whatever that happened in the red carpet in Oscar, you know, alopecia, the pattern baldness. If you feel you're ashamed of this alopecia, again, that is associated with depression, you know. So beware of this. 
uh, shame, including body shame and uh, defectiveness and also the social isolation, you know. So, yeah, that is another very interesting link. And final story of this month is that the boys were likely to be born with genital birth defect. That means birth defect on their genit genitals, you know. If the fathers took the commonly prescribed the drug that is called metformin, very, very commonly used drug for diabetes, right? So if fathers have taken metformin while trying to conceive the baby, then the boys are likely to have genital birth defect. Congenital, of course, you know, any birth defect is congenital. And but plus genital, that the birth defect is on their genital area, penis, of course. Right, so that is very interesting. So most probably there is a, a you know, the epigenetic transmission of the risk is transmitted. By the way, the, the metformin is something like a candy, you know, everybody is now consuming the metformin. So this paper has got a tremendous significance. And if you are a, a father, uh, I mean, if you are a, a man who is trying to conceive, then think of it, you know, just read this paper and assess the benefits and risk you know, uh, while trying to conceive. So that is very, very interesting. Coming to April observances, the general observance is that the first April is Autism Awareness Day and also the UN Delegates Day. You know, we have covered the story on the autism, the, the you know, the, uh, yes, the link with autism and, uh, uh, you know, and what, uh, this part of the brain, right? So amygdala, isn't it? So first of April is Autism Awareness Day. Fourth is International Day for Mind Awareness and Assistance in Mind Action. Fifth is International Day of Concerns. Twenty-one is World Creativity and Innovation Day. Twenty-second, of course, we are all looking for. April twenty-second is Earth Day, the day for the planet Earth. Twenty-fourth is Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace Day. And twenty-eighth is Safety and Health at Work Day, the day uh, to observe why the, the safety and health is really important at work, you know. So that means taking adequate precautions for fire, for example, or other occupational hazards, right? Coming to astronomy related observances, as usual, all these are binocular events. 5th April is Saturn Mars conjunction, two planets are in the same frame. And 17th is the full moon. That is something called the pink moon. The full moon in April is called pink moon. 22nd is Larid meteor shower. 24th is another meteor shower called Pi Pipet meteor shower. 25th is moon Saturn conjunction. Next day, 26th is moon Mars conjunction. And 27th is moon Venus conjunction. So we have got several conjunctions. Three conjunctions with moon. And the another, the fifth is Saturn Mars conjunction. I suggest all of you to check it out. The Sky View app, a free app uh, to spot, to help you to spot all this, uh, you know, celestial drama. Uh, it needs nothing, only your time. Just go to your garden, backyard, and just observe it. You know, there are several opportunities with the deadline on or after first April falling in this month. Please check out. The, the, sh the show notes for the link, including all the instructions how to apply, including EMBL International PhD Fellowship, Teach for India Grant, Oak Ridge National Lab, there is a PhD Fellowship, there is a, a you know, postdoc opportunities in three state in Italy, Raman Charpak Fellowship, Indo Taiwan Grant, all these are available. Uh, you know, please check out the show notes of it. And uh, yeah, so uh, we also have our Facebook group. So if you haven't, please do subscribe to our FB page in which the, our moderators do share the opportunities and the science related stories, right? And if you haven't, please do subscribe to our channel by clicking this link. And that's it for this month's episode. I will see you all in the next month. That is uh, the month of May, right? Till then, goodbye and please take care of yourself. And if you can, Someone else too. Bye.